Mahabharata is an earlier Indonesian book. Part 3. Santo Saba Works. Created as a discourse to scientists based on academic studies and studies, in an effort to restore the true history of Indonesia. Indonesia Arya. By. Santo Saba. Exploration and Research. Complete Info. WhatsApp to plus 62-813-2132-9787. Previous archipelago literary works that are currently only accepted as fiction fiction, mythos legends or other assumptions that are not real history even though they actually contain a series of thoughts. This thought is non-fiction that exists in the area of fiction. The presence of this non-fiction is to build the probability of the work, its possibility is arranged in layers of logic as long as. The period is in accordance with the journey of the story, because every response to a literary work of indigenous traditions of the region, individual authors and the soul of the times always give ornaments. Kidung literature. When viewed from a literary point of view, the writers generally clearly show their cleverness to tell a lively and interesting story or paint a realistic picture of the setting of the story. Most of the stories placed around the Kraton are shown below in several songs. 1. Historical song. The songs below have one common characteristic, namely the sources taken from the historical tradition of the Majapahit kingdom. 2. Song of Harsajaya. This song tells about the life of Harsajaya, the son of Rajanarasinga from Singhasari. He also told about the success of Jayakatwang's rebellion against Singhasari and being able to control the entire island of Java. However, in the rebellion, Harsajaya managed to escape. Then he founded the Majapahit kingdom. 3. Ranga Law. Telling about Ranga Law who killed Sagara Winodan in a battle around Majapahit. It was also told when Ranga Law and Kibo Anabrang faced off. Kibo Anabrang almost died, but managed to escape. When he was bathing in the river, he was caught by Ranga Law so that there was a battle and Ranga Law died. When Sora arrived there, he got angry and killed Kibo Anabrang. 4. Sarandaka tells of Mahapati who complained to make Raja, Sora, Nambi and Kebataruna, the son of Kibo Anabrang, compete. Sora and Nambi were killed by the king who later regretted it. Mahapati who thought he was going to be appointed governor of Mankubumi was then killed. Finally, there was a rebellion masterminded by Kuti which caused the king to be taken prisoner, but Gajamata crushed the rebellion. 5. Sundanese Song tells about the battle between the Majapahit kingdom and the Sundanese kingdom. The king of Sunda and his troops died except for Patar. After knowing that the king and his royal troops had died, the wife and daughter of the king of Sunda and the wives of the soldiers killed themselves. Hayam Wurik himself was sad, languished and soon died. 6. Panji story The main theme of the banner story is the marriage between the crown prince called Raiden Panji or Raiden Eno and the daughter called Raiden Gala. Another characteristic is friends who follow the main characters. 7. Wasang Sari tells of a jealous king Magadha who tries to kill Prince Weera Namtani who will be engaged to Raiden Gala, Daha's daughter. But his efforts were in vain. Then Daha was attacked by the king of Magadha, but the king of Magadha was killed by the banner. It also tells about Panji's Prince Weera Namtani, attempt to find the long-lost Raiden Gala from Daha since Panji returned to Koripan until they finally married and lived happily. 8. Kidung Sudamala and Sri Tanjung are different from the Kidung songs above. Both are more populist. Sudamala's story can be called a Ruwat play in the form of Kidung. Its function, according to the author, is that those who listen to or read this hymn will be freed Kalukat, from distress and adversity. Song of Sri Tanjung is a continuation of the song Sudamala. This song has a relationship with the Mahabharata. Previous archipelago literary works that are currently only accepted as fiction fiction, mythos legends or other assumptions that are not real history even though they actually contain a series of thoughts. This thought is non-fiction that exists in the area of fiction. The presence of this non-fiction is to build the probability of the work. Its possibility is arranged in layers of logic as long as. The period is in accordance with the journey of the story, because every response to a literary work of indigenous traditions of the region, individual authors and the soul of the times always give ornaments. Ramayana in Sundanese society. In Sundanese society, the word, Ramayana, has been mentioned in the ancient manuscripts of Sengyong Shiksakandong Karasian which had prey location 1518 AD, in the mention of the stories circulating at that time. 
The mention of the word Ramayana in the text is evidence that Ramayana and a number of other stories were known to the Sundanese at this time, Norduin, 1971. The story of Rama or Ramayana in the written tradition is found in the Sundanese Ramayana Pantan. Ramayana is like a rhyme story. The Pantan story is an oral literature that revolves around the kingdom of Gala, Pakuan, Pajajaran about the family of Prabhu Silawangi which has a special narrative arrangement. The manuscripts of the Sundanese Ramayana Pantan are written in Lantar script and in Old Sundanese. One of the uniqueness of the Ramayana Pantan is that the name of one of Dasamukha's wives is Manandari which is similar to Mandudari in the Hikayat Seri Rama which takes place in the Malay region. Although the tradition of the story of Rama in the Ramayana Pantan has stopped, in some folklore various types of Sundanese music circulating today, the name Manandari, Manandari in the Sundanese Ramayana Pantan is recognized quite familiarly even though it is only a memory of its name. It is estimated that the story of Rama, in the Sundanese Ramayana Pantan, was well known by the previous Sundanese people. However, Raa Martanagara composed Wawakan Bataro Rama 33 based in the Javanese language Sarat Rama as stated in the Wawakan Bataro Rama Colophon. The interesting thing is, why Raa Martanagara composed Wawakan Bataro Rama from Sarat Rama not from the Ramayana Pantan which is found in the Sundanese text. When viewed from the point of view as a writer and the attitude of life of Raa Martanagara who is full of attention to science, it is likely that he does not know about the Ramayana Pantan. In the Wawakan Bharata Rama Colophon, it is stated that the story of Sri Rama is very well known in Java. This explanation refers to the notion that the author knows very well about the story of Sri Rama. As for Raa Martanagara composing this story from Sarat Rama, it is estimated that it was his example that he wanted to put forward in the writing. Sarat Rama as the source of the composition of Wawakan Bataro Rama which originated from Kakawin Ramayana. Culturally it becomes a tradition that shows and presents cultural philosophy. Kakawin Ramayana is the only Kakawin found in central Java, because later the development of the Kakawin composition tradition moved to East Java Pradodokusumo, 1984, 2. More than the 9th century Poorbajaraka, 1952, 2, C.F. Pigo, 1967, 176, Ikram, 1980, 2, C.F. Padodokusumo, 2005. In 1934, Himansu Buzan Sarkar showed similarities in a certain stanza between Kakawin Ramayana and Bodhi's Ravanavada, Death of Ravana, written in the 6th or 7th century AD known as Bodhi Kavya. Manamohan Ghosh, continuing this search, shows a similarity between the two as many as eight stanzas Poorbajaraka, 1952, 3, C.F. Norduin, 1971, 151, Zotmulder, translated edition 1983, 289. Although the Kakawin Ramayana shows there are parts that are similar to the Bodhi Kavya Ramayana, the Ramayana Walmiki has parallels in the story, Stutterheim, 1989. 3 to 15. The parallels of the story here do not mean that the Kakawin Ramayana is based in the story of the Indian Ramayana Walmiki, the Kakawin Nusantara about the Ramayana is independently grown and born in the archipelago. Kakawin Ramayana then received acclaim from time to time. At the turn of the 18th century to the 19th century, Yasadipura reconstructed Kakawin Ramayana into Sarat Rama, Jarwatu, 1984, 216. Sudewa, 1989, 9-10. Because of the tradition of copying, in the Javanese manuscript there are a number of titles that tell the story of the character Rama, Girarde, Seas, 1983. B.D.K. Hadisuchipto, 1985, Berend ed., 1990, 382 to 396, Berend and Tidak 1997, 287 to 292. Given that the odds are very far between the composition of Kakawin Ramayana and its preservation in the 18th to 19th century, it is unlikely that Yasadipura composed Saratrama from Kakawin Ramayana. One of the Sarat Rama composed at this time, in terms of the use of stanzas including Jarwa Makapad by Raa Martanagara, was used as a source of composing Wawakan Batara Rama. Tantu Pangalaran, 
Tantu Pangalaran is a prose text that tells the story of the creation of humans on the island of Java and all the rules that humans must obey and tells of the establishment of mandalas in Java, especially in the area of East Java in the past. Pangalaran's son, whose date is in 1557, is in Old Javanese. The compilation of this book is located in Kabuyudan Nangaparwada, 1924, 128. The development of the story of the removal of Mount Mahameru on the island of Java in this Tantu Pangalaran can be summarized as follows. At first the island of Java was uninhabited and in a chaotic condition, because the island of Java was always shaking, compare with a pumice rock that shook on the surface of the water. Therefore, Java Island needs a mountain to plug it in, so that it doesn't shake again. Seeing this condition, the gods raised the peak of Mount Mahameru, Mount Semeru, from India, Jambudwipa, and placed them on the island of Java. But what happened was that the island of Java tipped over and the east of the island of Java was lifted upward. Therefore the gods moved it to the east, but on the way to moving the mountain to the east, the mountain was scattered along the way, so that there were mountains of Lau, Willis, Kelet, Kawi, Arjuna, Kumukas and finally Semeru. After that the condition of the island of Java did not shake anymore, Sokmano, 1985, 47. In the teachings of Hindu India and Buddhism, it is known that the macrocosmic conception, the composition of the universe, is known that the universe is in the shape of a flat circle like a disk with Mount Mahameru as the center of the universe as the dwelling place of the gods. Previously, Jambudwipa was peaceful and quiet, but suddenly the land shook and was swayed by the ocean waves. Finally, the gods tried to move Mount Mahameru to Java, which was still safe as a place for new human life. In the course of moving the mountain, the Mahameru part fell into mountains that were lined up along the island of Java, including in East Java to become Mount Katong or Lau, Willis, Kampit or Kelad, Kawi, Arjuna, Arjuno, and Mount Kemukas, Wellerang. Mahameru's body was placed on a slight angle and leaned on Mount Brahma, Bromo, and became Mount Semeru. The peak of Mahameru itself is Mount Panangangan or Patra, Haina, 1982, 4-6. The identification of Agastya figures in Java Agastya in the Shiva temple is always placed in the southern niche. From the Ramayana Book 7, 57, information about Agastya's birth can be obtained from her mother, Urwachi. It is said that the Brahman, Vasistha, and the king, Nimi, who lost their bodies finally met Lord Brahma. They were advised to enter the seeds of god Waruna and god Mitra. Diwa Mitra has a partner named Urwachi. When Lord Waruna saw Urwachi, he was attracted to seduce Urwachi. Then there was an affair. After being discovered by Diwa Mitra, Urwachi was expelled from heaven to earth. Be Urwachi a human and after the completion of the time, the seed of Waruna god was born to become Agastya and the seed of Diwa Mitra as Vasistha. Poerbajaraka 1992, 3-6. From literary stories from India, Agastya is associated with the conquest of Mount Vindhya and also the crossing or drinking of sea water in the south to dry. It can be concluded that Agastya in Hindu mythology is a character who is ordered to spread Vedic teachings towards the Himalayas, Meru, to the south including the archipelago Poerbajaraka, 1992, 43, Suwardono, 2001, 16. Agastya went to Java to develop a teaching which turned out to be the teachings of Hindu Siwa. This can be seen from the description of the Book of Smaradahana, from the time of King Kamekwara I of the Daha Kingdom, Kadiri. In Sarga 38, 13-14 the translation is as follows. There is one region indicated by Parwati. The most beautiful midland country is surrounded by seas such as Meru, holy and always visited by the very respected RSIIs. Its history in the past is heard. The famous book Kumara in Kashmir was immediately sworn in by Diwa Siva to become a very beautiful island, big and in the shape of a lipung, Krom, in Poerbajaraka, 1992, 44. As a student of Shiva, Agastya was ordered to guard the entrance gate south of Mahameru. This is in accordance with the contents of the book Tantu Pangalaran where Kala and Anakala guard the west gate of Mahameru. Gana was positioned as guardian of the east, Mrs. Gauri or Durga Mahisasramardini in the north, while Agastya as a special student of Shiva was placed to guard the south Poerbajaraka, 1992-132.
According to the description of Pigo, 1924, 254, states that, the characters who are united here into one group as the guardians of Mahameru, are well known and have never been combined like that anywhere. In general, in the archipelago, especially in Java, Agastya is also known as Shiva Mahaguru with the characteristics of an old man with a pot-bellied belly, Lambodara, a thick, pointed beard, with two hands on the right carrying an axamala, tasba, or trident and on the left carrying a pitcher of living water, Kamandalu. However, there is a striking contradiction between Agastya and Shiva Mahaguru when seen from the characteristics of the statues and descriptions of literature or stories about the Indian version of the Hindu pantheon. In some historical stories, we take the example of Pararadan when the king of Dandong Gendis Kurtajaya Krenga, the last king of Panjalu, Kadiri, transformed into Shiva Mahaguru, his characteristics are four-armed and has a third eye, a characteristic of Siva. I. Dangdang Gendis Angadagakan Crash, Ladeyanapun Tinanspakan Ringalma, Saratalinga, Rinpuchuking Tumbak, Anandika Tur, La Parabuyangadelanjan Kachoktining Sun, Saratakadan Akacharbuja, Atranayana, Saksatbhatara Guru Rupanira. Translate. I. Dangdang Gendis set up a spear, the spear shaft was pushed into the ground, he sat on the spearhead, as he said. Well, gentlemen, behold our supernatural powers. He looks four-armed, three-eyed, it is solely the teacher's Bhattara embodiment. Padmapaspita, 1996, 21, 63. From this description it can be concluded that Agastya is not the same as Bhattara Guru, Shiva Mahaguru, but is an incarnation of Dangdang Gendis as Bhattara Guru. This king was a devotee of Bathara Guru. This worship is usually carried out by members of the RSI community who usually reside in quiet places on the slopes of mountains and in the forest. RSI in general have high religious knowledge, so that they worship more gods in their Kiran, Manasa, Intermediate Puja, and do not need statues or other objects for worship facilities, Santico, 1995, 127. With the way of worshipping gods in that mind, as RSI, Rajar C., the last king of Kadiri, Dandong Gendis, had a religious knowledge that believed he could unite with the gods he worshipped. It is not surprising that Kurtajaya in the Pararadan book is depicted as transforming himself as Bhattara Guru in order to convince the poets of his claim to be the incarnation of Lord Shiva in the world. A relic in the Diogar and Trabancore temples that date from the Gupta period of the Maurya dynasty, India, there is a statue of Agastya but has a slender body shape, not protruding like in Javanese temples. In Indonesia, in, Outhidekandij Verslag 1923, Vijlij K. in the pictures of the Sriwedari Museum collection, figure no. A. whom Bosch named Maitreya, but very clearly identifies Agastya as having a pointed mustache and beard, as well as the jug in his left hand that is placed low. The shape of this statue is also normal, without a distended belly, and there is no Yajnapada Poorbajaraka, 1992-134-135. Precisely on the eastern slope of Mount Kawi in Duku Gasak, Karangbesuki village, Sukun district, Malong city, there is a small site called Karangbesuki temple. The characteristic of this character is an old man with a pointed beard, slender stomach, two arms, the right side carries a trident and the left has broken off. From the left hand whose attitude is slightly lowered, it can be concluded that the broken wrist of this statue carries a kamandalu. The Danoyoi inscription around the 8th century tells of the inauguration of a new Ahastya statue made of beautiful black stone. This statue was intended as a substitute for the previous statue which was made of sandalwood and was completely rotten at that time. At this religious event the king also presented a building for work purposes for the Brahmins and housing to accommodate guests, along with food supplies, bedding and clothing, Sokmano, 1977, 116, Kehiono, 2006, 4. The king made a sacred building, temple, which was very good for the Maharesi, Agastya. This was used as a means of destroying diseases that dispel, spirit Poorbajaraka, 1976, 92-98. The construction of the place is in accordance with the name of the village which is now housed by the Karong Besuki Temple, which is a place of safety. Mount Kawi. Gunung Kawi is the natural boundary between Blatar Regency and Malong Regency. 
This mountain consists of Mount Kawi Budik, 2651 MDPL, 2868 meters ASL, Vemlin, 1949, 30. In fact, from a historical perspective, it has been known since the reign of the Kanjuruan Kingdom, which at that time was centered in the Malong area. This Kanjuruan Kingdom leaves us with important information about the existence of Mount Kawi which is contained in the Danoyoi inscription, which is dated Sokka 682. The inscription contains the essence of the existence of a wise and powerful king named Dewasaya. Under the auspices of his reign, a white fire radiated its rays, illuminating its surroundings. One son, namely the king of Gajayana, a king who protected humans, had a daughter named Udahana. The king gave peace to the Brahmins and the people who worshipped Agastya. The king made a sacred building, temple, which was very good for the Maharesi, Agastya, to destroy the disease that eliminates spirit Poorbhajaraka, 1976, 92-98. Based on the information in the Tantu Pajalaran book, Agastya received a retreat at Mount Kawi. Since then Gunning Kawi has belonged to him, namely as a mark of assignment for Batara Guru, Siwa. The following is an excerpt from the text of Tantu Pangalaran, sayings of Mentaksanabhatara Jagadvachesa, Angustayanuganirahina Sti, Sinaramning Tatwamar Thasawamba, Yinuganira. Madmahana Dewada Purusankara. Inararan Bhagawan Agasti, Ananugrahanka Wikandebhatara, Kinwan Matyapaha. Ring Gunning Kawi, Tinher Makadrao Yakong Gunning Kawi Pinakapasinapakasvatara Guru, Pigo, 1924, 92. Meaning, to talk about the ways of Bhattara Jagadwachesa, he pointed his yoga at his thumb, and turned it into ashes, which he then doused with tatwamar to holy water and did yoga, so that he became a deity in human body. He received the respectable name Agasti, as a sign of honor he received the position of Wiku from Bhattara, and received orders to perform austerities at Mount Kawi. Since then Mount Kawi has belonged to him, as a sign of Bhattara Guru's assignment, Poorbhajaraka, 1992-40. The name, Kawi, comes from the word, Kadia Kawi, which means chanted verse. There are also those who connect this term with, Awi, which means a class of people among the Watekai Jro, Manalala Drauya Haji Zoedmulder, 1995, 475, 86. Therefore, Gunning Kawi is a mountain which in the past was widely known by hermits, RSI or Buyanga as a place of hermitage and a place for making poetry Kawi. The location of Mount Kawi is also supported by a description of the story of Buyanga Manak's journey in the area. Ku N. Duk Ka Sagara Dalem, Nalalar Ka Kaganengan, Sumenka Ka Gunning Kawi, Dizarang Kijulunana, Sadatankapami Jahan. Translate. Quote, comma, comma, dot. Arrived at Sagara Dalem, walked through Kaganengan, climbed Mount Kawi, explored its south direction. Arriving to Pamajahan, Nordian and ATU, 2009, 303. The name Sagara Dalem in the description of Buyanga Manak's journey is located between Mount Mahameru, Semeru, and Kaganengan which is west of Mount Semeru. The name Duku Sagara Dalem is an old name for a Sagaran hamlet located in Kendalpayak village, Pakasaji district, Malong Regency, Nordian and A. To, 2009, 303. Kaganengan today is the name of a village located in Malong Regency, namely Jeningan, which is located west of Kendalpayak village, Pakasaji district or Duku Kaganengan in Parangargo village, Wagir district. Kaganengan in the past was a place where there was a religious community group, Nordian and A. To, 2009, 513. Therefore it can be understood if Badut temple, Karong Besuki temple and Songorati temple in Batu are declared as places of worship for Bathara Guru, even Sirakankong Temple which is located in the southwest or south of the foot of Mount Kawi is also used as a place of worship for Bathara Guru, Riyandika, 2010, 3. Masson's name, Haseen. In the Tantu Pangalaran book it is reported that Agastya made a trip to visit Bhagawan Markandeya at Mandala Kailaka in Haseen, the news is quoted as follows. Sweet curry tang raray eat food. Tuminghal ta. Bhagawan Agasti. Malastumanam Nairaring Kassini Kangare left his mother. Welcome Toniratangare. Nardinu Dinalongira, Inanganira Ring Yoga Samadhi.
Atuha Tang Rare W K Asan, Winawanira Mangulwan Maringmasan, Dadan Gringar Gakelika, Ring Mandala Bhagawan Markandeya, Pigo, 1924, 126. Meaning, the abandoned children cried screaming. The Agasti, honored it saw it. He felt sorry to see the sad condition of the children, because their mother left them. He took the children, washed them, fed them and nursed them with yoga and meditation. When the boys finally became adults, they were brought to the west, to Masin, to the top of Kailaka in the Honorable Markandeya Mandala. Quote, Poerbajaraka, 1992, 51-52. From the description above it can be concluded that in the description of the Tantu Pangalaran book it is told that Agastya who came from Mount Kawi traveled with his two adopted children westward to visit Bhagawan Markandeya at Mandala Kailaka in Haseen. The name Haseen or Masin reminds us of the new inscription with the date Saka 952, this inscription is a Tamra inscription, metal inscription, which currently exists in the city of Surabaya. In this inscription, it is said that King Erlanga gave a land prize as Sima to the new citizens because the king had vowed that if the king defeated King Haseen, the Baru village would be awarded the land of Sima, Sumadio, 1992, 180-181. Where is Haseen? In the contents of the book Tantu Pangalaran, Haseen or Masin is an area located in, Mangilwan Maring Masin, comes the Kelika Arga Ring, the Bagawan Markandeya Ring Mandala, they are west, to Masin, to the top of Kailaka in the Honorable Markandeya Mandala, Sapasira Mangilwan Maring Masin, from western Pasira arrived at Masin, and, because of Masin, Mangedan Sira Tumit Ta Sira Batari Paramekwari. Mararyan Ta Sira Ring Mount Willis, from Masin to the east, follow the Paramekwari Batari. Arriving at Mount Willis Pigo, 1924, 126, 70, 84. According to Poor Bajaraka, 1992, 52, the area of Masin, or Haseen must be sought in the west of Mount Kawi and in the Pararurn book it has been reported about the wives of Raja Dandong Gendis Kurtajaya, including Dewey Haseen, 1976, 40. Masin or Haseen in the Tantu Pangalaran book is located west of Mount Willis and also west of Pasira. If the Pasira area is east of Haseen or Masin, then this area must be sought between the valley of Mount Kawi to the west to the valley or the foot of the mountain in the western region of Mount Willis. In the area of Tulungagung Regency there is a name similar to the name Pasira, namely Pasir. Pasir is the name of the hamlet which is located in Junjung village, Sumber Jempal district. Its location on the north side of the South Cretaceous Mountains. In the hamlet, there are several archaeological remains, one of which is a sand cave site which was previously used as Carcian. This is supported by a wall sculpture in the form of a scene of an ascetic being seduced by lust. In these sites according to Krom, 1923, and Verbeek there are chronograms of Sokka 1325, 1224 Sokka, and 1228 Sokka which show the Majapahit era. According to Munandar, it was stated that the sand cave site was the same as the Selamanglang cave. Based on the similarity of the form of the carving which is estimated to have originated from the ex-11th century AD to the Majapahit Empire, Kehiono, 2010, 20-21. If this assumption is correct, then Haseen or Masin must be located to the west of Duku Pasir. In the area of Trengalike Regency, there is a name of a river that flows towards Tulungagung Regency, namely the Nasinan River whose water source comes from Mount Willis. This river is one of the upper reaches of the Brantas River, whose flow then enters the Engroo River and finally the Brantas River. If this river is correct and can be approved, then Nasinan is the archaic name of Haseen or Masin, where the king of Haseen was in power, then it is very appropriate if the Haseen or Masin area which is located in Trengalek Regency is placed to the west of Duku Pasir, Tulungagung Regency. This can be supported and strengthened also by what is explained in the new inscription issued by King Erlanga above, that Baru is a character or Paraman intended for worship Kabaktian, of the Hyonghu and the Hyong Dipur, the Hyong Kawaiol and the Hyong spirit. The name of one of these places of worship is the name of the Kawaiol and Hyong. This name may now be Kamulan village. Meanwhile, the name Desa Baru which is contained in the new inscription may now be Baruharjo village. The three names of these places, namely the Nasinan, 
Baruharjo, and Kongulan rivers are now in Durainan district, Trengalek Regency. However, to the north of Trengalek Regency, precisely in Ponorogo Regency, there is the Asan River. It is possible that Hassin is an area located between the Nasinan River in Trengalek and the Asan River in Ponorogo. Kurtajaya Sandiri in the Pararadan book explains that having three wives is Dewey Hassin. While the name Kailaka in Tantu Pangalaran is mentioned as follows, Maring Masin, comes the Kelika Argga Ring, Bagawan Markandeya Ring Mandala. Pigo, 1924, 126, which means, to Masin, to the top of Kailaka in Mandala Deer Markandeya. Poerbajaraka, 1992, 51-52. Where is the location of the peak of Kailaka? In Pogalan Subdistrict, Nadarengo Village, there is a child of Mount Willis in the southwest, to be precise a hill called Mount Tumpakanyadran below which flows the Nasinan River. The name Tumpakanyadran means, Tumpak, which is, rising, while, ny consciousness, is an activity of religious ceremonies or rituals of a religion or belief in order to obtain something and salvation. So the name Tumpakanyadran Mountain is a mountain that is used for a place for religious ceremonies or religious rituals to seek blessings. It can be emphasized again that near Mount Tumpakanyadran, which is to the north, there is the name Mount Sentono. Sentono has the meaning of a place of residence. The meaning of these two terms is the same as the peak of Kailaka which is a place of guardian of Lord Shiva's residence. If we connect it with Mount Willis which is one of the sacred mountains in Java, then what is said in the Tantu Pangalaran book is appropriate and synchronous, where it is stated that Agastya is the guardian of the southern part of Lord Shiva's residence Poerbajaraka, 1992, 130. In addition, in Trengalek Regency, precisely in Kadunglura village, Pogalan district, there are archaeological remains in the form of temple building structures. The temple is called Bronca Temple which is located not so far from the Nasinan River. Whether this site has anything to do with Raja Hasin or the place where Bhagawan Markandeya's mandala remains remains to be investigated. Mahabharata versions. In India there are two main versions of the Mahabharata in Sanskrit which are quite different from each other. These two versions are referred to by the terms, Northern version, and Southern version. Usually the Northern version is considered to be closer to the oldest version. The Indian version of Mahabharata, is an epic story that is divided into 18 books or often called Astadasaparwa. The series of books tells the chronology of events in the Mahabharata story, from the story of the ancestors of the Pandavas and the Kauravas, Yayati, Yadu, Huru, Kuru, Duswanta, Sakantala, Bharata, to the story of the arrival of the Pandavas in heaven. Bharatayuda war in Kurusetra. In Hindu literature mostly written Sanskrit. The word, literature, which is rooted in referring to a timeless general science, is divided into two major parts namely audible and smrti, which are the main sacred literatures for Indian Hindus. 1. Adi Parwa. The Adiparwa book contains various stories that breed Indian Hinduism, the story of the screening of Mandaragiri, the story of Bhagawan Domaya testing his three students, the story of the ancestors of the Pandavas and the Kauravas, the story of the birth of Rsi Byasa, the story of the childhood of the Pandavas and the Kauravas, the story of the giant Hidamba's death in the hands of Bhimasena and the story of Arjuna getting Draupadi. 2. Sabaparwa. The Sabaparwa book contains the story of the meeting of the Pandavas and the Kauravas in a hall to play gambling, on the plan of Duryodhana. Draupadi, wife of the Pandavas, Dursasana. Due to Sankuni's cunning efforts, the game was won twice by Kaurava so that according to the agreement, the Pandavas had to exile themselves to the forest for twelve years and after that went through a period of incognito for one year. 3. Wanaparwa. The Wanaparwa book tells the story of the Pandavas during the twelve years of exile in the forest. The book also tells the story of Arjuna who meditated on a mountain to obtain a powerful weapon. 4. Wiradaparwa. The Wiradaparwa book contains the story of one year of incognito Pandavas in the Warada kingdom after experiencing exile for twelve years. Yudhisthira disguised himself as a religious expert, Bhima as a cook, Arjuna as a dance teacher, Nikula as a horse tamer, Sahadeva as a shepherd, and Draupadi as a makeup artist. 5. Udyogaparwa. 
The Udyogaparwa book contains a story about the preparation for the Bharata Bharatayuda family war. Krishna who acted as peacemaker failed to negotiate peace with the Kauravas. The Pandavas and Kauravas sought as many allies as possible throughout Bharatavarsha, and almost the entire kingdom was divided into two groups. 6. Bismaparwa. The Bismaparwa book is an early book that tells about the battle at Kurukshetra. In some parts, there is a sacred conversation between Krishna and Arjuna before the war takes place. This conversation is known as the Bhagavad Gita. In the Bismaparwa book, it is also told about the death of Risabhisma on the tenth day due to Arjuna's efforts assisted by Srikandi. 7. Dronaparwa. The Dronaparwa book tells the story of Bhagawan Drona's appointment as the Korawa warlord. Drona tried to arrest Yudhisthira, but failed. Dronagugar was on the battlefield because he was beheaded by Drestadyumna when he was bowed limp when he heard the news that told of the death of his son, Aswatama. The book also tells the story of the death of Abhimanu and Ghatatbaka. 8. Karnaparwa. The Karnaparwa book tells the story of Karna's appointment as warlord by Duryodhana after the death of Bhisma, Drona, and their other allies. In the Bible, Bhima tells of the fall of the Dursasana. Salya becomes Karna's train driver, then an argument breaks out between them. Finally, Karna died in the hands of Arjuna with a Pasupati weapon on the 17th day. 9. Salyaparwa. The Salyaparwa book contains the story of Sang Salya's appointment as the Korawa warlord on the 18th day. On that very day, Salya died on the battlefield. After leaving his allies and brothers, Duryodhana regretted his actions and wanted to stop the fighting with the Pandavas. This became a mockery of the Pandavas so that Duryodhana was provoked to fight Bhima. In the fight, Duryodhana died, but he had appointed Aswatama as commander. 10. Saupt Kaparwa. The Sauptakaparwa book contains the story of Aswatama's revenge against the Pandava soldiers. At night, he and Kripa and Kurtawarma infiltrated the Pandavas camp and killed many people, except the Pandavas. After that he fled to Bhyasa's hermitage. The next day he was followed by Pandava and a fight broke out between Aswatama and Arjuna. Vyasa and Kresna can solve that problem. Finally Aswatama regretted his actions and became a hermit. 11. Straparwa. The Straparwa book contains the lamentation of women who were left behind by their husbands on the battlefield. Yudhisthira held a funeral ceremony for those who died and offered holy water to the ancestors. On that same day, Dewey Kunti told about Karna's birth which was her personal secret. 12. San Parwa. The Santiparwa book contains the story of Yudhisthira's inner strife because he had killed his brothers on the battlefield. Finally he was given holy discourse by Arsabhyasa and Sri Kresna. They explained the secrets and objectives of the teachings of Dharma so that Yudhisthira could carry out his duties as king. 13. Anuzasanaparwa. The Anuzasanaparwa book contains the story of Yudhisthira's submission to Rezi Bhisma to accept his teachings. Bhisma teaches about the teachings of Dharma, Artha, rules about various ceremonies, the obligations of a king, and so on. Finally, Bhisma left the world in peace. 14. Aswamedikaparwa. The Aswamedikaparwa book contains a story about the implementation of the Aswamedha ceremony by King Yudhisthira. The book also tells the story of Arjuna's battle with the kings in the world, the story of the birth of Parakhezit who was originally killed in the womb because of Aswatama's powerful weapon, but was brought back to life by Sri Krishna. 15. Asramawasikaparwa. The Asramawasikaparwa book contains the story of the departure of Drestarastra, Gandhari, Kunti, Widora, and Sanjaya into the middle of the forest, to leave the busy world. They gave up the throne completely to Yudhisthira. Finally, Rezi Narada came with the news that they had gone to heaven because they were burned by their own holy fire. 16. Mosalaparwa. The Mosalaparwa book tells of the destruction of the Rezni nation. Sri Krishna left his kingdom and went to the middle of the forest. Arjuna visited Dwarawati and found that the city was empty. On the advice of Rsi Bhyasa, Pandavas and Draupadi lead a life of Sanyasin, or exile themselves and leave the mortal world. 17. Mahaprastani Kaparwa. The Mahaprastani Kaparwa book tells the story of the journey of the Pandavas and Draupadi to the top of the Himalayas, while the throne is handed over to Parakhezit, Arjuna's grandson. During his journey, Draupadi and the Pandavas, except Yudhisthira, died on the way. 18. 
Swargarohana Parwa. The Swargarohana Parwa book tells the story of Yudhisthira who reached the top of a mountain and was picked up to reach heaven by Diwa Indra. On his way, he was accompanied by a very loyal dog. He refuses to go to heaven if told to leave his dog alone. The dog revealed his true form, namely Lord Dharma. Mahabharata version of the archipelago in India. His name and story is in Mahabharata Draupadi. The Indian version of Mahabharata, Draupadi is the wife of the five Pandavas. The Javanese version of Mahabharata, Draupadi is Yudhisthira's wife. Shikandi. Shikandi is a character in the Indian version of Mahabharata born before becoming a woman. Then, because his love was rejected by Bhisma Shikandi, he went to his knees with the intention of taking revenge on Bhishma. He was reborn as a woman Shikandi who was raised like a man. He was raised like a man, even everyone recognized him as a man, even he married by exchanging his genitals with a man. However, it turned out that Bhisma recognized Shikandi who was reborn as Shikandi and intended to kill him. Knowing this, Arjuna rushed to fight Bhisma and finally Bhisma died at Arjuna's hands with Shikandi's help. The Javanese version of the heroine was born as a girl who was trained in archery and armed like a man. Srikandi also became a female soldier who always fought. It was the Javanese Shikandi version that succeeded in killing Bhisma and herself as a result of being beheaded while sleeping. Gandhari. The Indian version of Gandhari's Mahabharata is said to remain fond of Pandavas even though he is not his own son. In the Javanese version, Gandhari is told that he really hates Pandavas and raises Pandavas with great hatred. Punakawan. The Pandava Mahabharata in the Javanese version is cared for by the Punakawanya, namely Samar, Gareng, Petruk and Bagong, while the Kurawadi is cared for by Tagog. Gatatbaka and Tiwikrama. Gatatbaka in the Indian version does not have flying skills, only Tiwikramas can fly. However, in the Javanese version Gatatbaka is said to be able to fly, has wire muscles and iron bones, while Tiwikrama has super vision and hearing. Gatatbaka. Javanese version Gatatbaka, is a warrior from Pringandanianak from Raiden Workadara with Dewey Hadambi Arimdi. The name of the wife of Gatatbaka Endong Perjiwa then had a child from a marriage named Sasikurana Senapati the war of Hastinapura after the reign under Arjuna's grandson, Pikesite. Ibu Hadambi, the wife of Bhima or Workadara, was pregnant and Hadambi gave birth to a giant baby because actually Dewey Hadambi was a giant embodiment of a woman with a baby named Tetuka, Tetuka's umbilical cord could not be cut off with various sharp weapons. Adipati Karna, who is actually Arjuna's older brother, was also doing a tapabroto, begging to be given a magic weapon by the gods, giving Arjunaguna the Kunta Vijayadanu weapon to cut Tetuka's umbilical cord. The manifestation of Karna, which resembles Arjuna, comes early to the gods to ask for Kunta Vijayadanu's weapon. By the gods the weapon was given to the person who was mistaken for Arjuna. After getting the Kunta Vijaya weapon, finally Karna left heaven, Arjuna came to meet the gods to collect the Kunta Vijayadanu weapon that God had promised him. The gods realized that the Kunta Vijayadanu had been brought by Karna, whose form was the same as Arjuna, with the help of Lord Indra, making the sun dark like a cloud so that the gods had difficulty distinguishing which was Karna and which was Arjuna. Gods ordered Arjuna to chase Karna and seize Kunta Vijayadanu's weapon, there was a fight between Karna and Arjuna fighting over the weapon's gift of God, finally Arjuna only got the scabbard of the weapon while Karna got the weapon. The fight because Arjuna is over, Karna gets a weapon and Arjuna gets a scabbard or container from Batara's weapon. Narada came to Arjuna and said that Arjuna had to scrape the weapon because he fell in his hand and told him that with the sheath it was already biased to break the baby's umbilical cord. Arjuna finally abolished the weapon and then returned to the Jodipati Kasatriyan where the baby was still waiting for Arjuna to return to have his umbilical cord cut off. After Arjuna's return, carrying the Kunta Vijayadanu Sarong, then Arjuna approached the Tetuka baby to cut the umbilical cord, the Vijayadanu Kunta holster which was used to cut the navel went into the belly of the Tetuka. Then came Batara Narada saying that this did not matter, instead it made Tetuka stronger with the note that one day if you went to war then you would only die by the Vijayadas Kunta weapon which is now in Karna's hands. Therefore, as much as possible Tetuka will not come face to face with his father Karna. 
Apart from the arrival of Batara Narada to deliver the news, there were other things that he wanted to convey. At this time Kayangan was being hit by destruction due to the actions of Pada Sekipu and also his troops sent by a giant king named Kala Prakana who asked for the power of Kayangan Jungring Saloka who was being led by Batara Guru, Manak Maya. Therefore, Narada came here to raise a new war senapati, namely a Teduka baby. The news conveyed by Batara Narada about the matter if Tetuka would be brought to heaven to make a Senapati fight against the Pada Sekipu and also his king Kala Prakana Batara Naradame convinced to. Before Tetuka advances to face Kala Prakana, Tetuka will be raised first, trained in the Kandradimuka crater, because Kala Prakana did not want to have to fight with a boy. Finally, the Pandavas gave up Tetuka who would be brought by Batara Narada. Batara Narada, the baby, was entrusted to Umpu Ramadi to be trained, raised in the Kandradimuka crater, together with Umpu Ramadi in carrying out their duties, all the gods were ordered by Umpu Ramadi to donate their powerful weapons to the sun. This baby Tetuka will one day become an invincible knight. Tetuka is lifted from the Kandradimuka crater, which has the form of a strong knight. Batara senses to make Tetuka able to speak like a human. With the lightning energy possessed by Batara Indra, he became Tetuka who had a firm voice like his father Workadara and was given the name Gatatbaka. Gatatbaka advanced against Sekipu he was first given additional strength by Batara, among others. 1. Caping Basuninda which has a function if it is hot does not feel hot as well as if it is not raining. 2. Kutang Antakusuma which functions so that Gatatbaka can fly without using wings. Gatatbaka defeated Pada Sekipu and also Kala Prakana before they returned to rule in the Pringandani kingdom, Gatatbaka, first in the Batara's discourse, so that Gatatbaka understands manners, culture, government and other important things. Abhimanu. Abhimanu. Other names Parthasuda, Parthadmaja Partha Admaja, origin of Hastinapura, kingdom of Kuru, his weapon of arrows, northern spouse, son of Parakazit, he is the son of Arjuna from one of his wives named Subhadra. It is Abhimanu who will carry on Judastira. Ayagugar in the great battle at Kurukshetra as the youngest knight of the Pandava side, being only 16 years old. Abhimanu married Uttara, daughter of King Warada and had a son named Parakazit, who was born after his fall. Abhimanu consists of two Sanskrit words, namely Abhi, brave, and Maniu, character. In Sanskrit, the word Abhimanyu literally means, one who is fearless, or, who is heroic. Birth, education, and battle when he was not yet born in his mother's womb, Abhimanyu learned about entering the deadly impenetrable formation called Chakrayuha of Arjuna. Mahabharata explains that from inside the womb, he overheard Krishna's conversation with his mother, Subhadra. Krishna spoke about how to enter Chakrayuha and then Subhadra, Abhimanyu's mother, fell asleep so the baby didn't have a chance to know how to escape the information. Abhimanyu spent his childhood in Dwaraka, the city where his mother lived. He was trained by his father named Arjuna who was a great knight and brought up under Kresna's guidance. His father married Abhimanyu to Uttara, the daughter of Raja Warada, to strengthen the relationship between the Pandavas and the family of King Warada during the upcoming Bharatayuda battle. The Pandavas disguised themselves to complete their exile without being noticed in the kingdom of King Warada, namely Matsya. As the grandson of Indra, the god of magic weapons as well as the god of war, Abhimanyu was a brave and ferocious knight. Considered equal to his father's abilities, Abhimanyu was able to fight great knights such as Drona, Karna, Duryodhana and Dursasana. He was praised for his courage and for having a strong sense of loyalty to his father, uncle, and their wishes. Abhimanyu was killed. On the thirteenth day of Bharatayuda, the Kauravas challenged the Pandavas to break the circular battle formation known as Chakrayuha. The Pandavas accepted the challenge because Kresna and Arjuna knew how to defeat various formations. However, on that day, Kresna and Arjuna were busy fighting with the Samsaptaka army. Since the Pandavas had accepted the challenge, they had no choice but to try to use the young Abhimanyu, who had knowledge of how to break the Chakrayuha formation but didn't know how to get out of it. To ensure that Abhimanyu would not be trapped in the formation, the Pandava brothers decided that they and their allies would break the formation with Abhimanyu and help the young man get out of the formation. On that day, Abhimanyu used his wits to break through the formation. 
The Pandava brothers and their allies try to follow him in a formation, but they are intercepted by Jayadrata, the king of Sindhu, who uses the gift of Shiva to be able to hold the Pandavas except Arjuna, for only one day. Abhimanyu was left alone to fend off the attack of the Korawa troops. Abhimanyu ruthlessly killed several knights who approached him, including Duryodhana's son, Laxmana. After witnessing his beloved son being killed, Duryodhana was furious and ordered all the Korawa troops to attack Abhimanyu. Having failed to destroy Abhimanyu's armor, on Drona's advice, Karna destroyed Abhimanyu's bow from behind. Then the chariot was destroyed, the coachman and horse were killed, and all his weapons were wasted. The son of Dursasana tries to fight barehanded with Abhimanyu. However, regardless of the rules of war, the Kauravas attacked Abhimanyu simultaneously. Abhimanyu was able to survive until his sword broke and the wheels of the carriage he used as a shield were smashed to pieces. Not long after, Abhimanyu was killed by the son of Dursasana by smashing his head with a club. Arjuna took revenge in the Kakrayuha formation. The news of Abhimanyu's death made Arjuna very sad and hurt. He realized that if Jayadrata had not prevented the Pandavas from entering the Chakrayuha formation, Abhimanyu would have received help. He then vowed to kill Jayadratan the next day before sunset. In response to this, the Korawaman placed Jayadrata very far from Arjuna. Thousands of warriors and knights surrounded and protected Jayadratha. Arjuna tried to reach Jayadrata, but thousands of Korean troops got in his way. Until the sun almost sets, Jayadrata is still far from Arjuna's reach. Seeing this, Kresna used his cunning. He made the sun grow so that the atmosphere darkened as if the sun had set. The Kauravas and the Pandavas thought it was already night, and according to the rules, they stopped the war and returned to their respective camps. Thus, the Kauravas did not continue the fight and Jayadrata was no longer under their protection. When Arjuna's chariot was close to Jayadrata's carriage, the sun appeared again and Krishna told Arjuna to take the opportunity to kill Jayadrata. Arjuna raised his bow and launched an arrow, severing Jayadrata's neck. Right at that time, it was already evening, the sun had set and Arjuna managed to complete his vow to kill Jayadrata. Abhimanyu is the incarnation of the son of the moon god. When the moon god was asked by another god about his son's departure to earth, he made a pact that his son would stay on earth for only 16 years as he could not endure separation from his son. Abhimanyu was 16 years old when he was killed in battle. Abhimanyu's son, Parakhezit, was born after his death, and became the only knight of the Kuru family who survived after Bharatayuda, and continued the Pandava lineage. Abhimanyu is often seen as the brave knight of the Pandavas, who was willing to give up his life during the war at a very young age. Abhimanyu in Javanese Puppetry In Javanese puppet treasures, Abhimanyu, as Arjuna's son, is an important figure. Below are described the characteristics of this figure in the Javanese culture that has developed rather than the same figure in India. Abhimanyu in the Javanese puppet version, narrated Abhimanyu because he was strong, but he got the Wahyu Makutha Raja, a revelation that stated that his descendants would be the successors to the throne of the kings Ophastina. Abhimanyu is also known as Ankawijaya, Jaya Mursita, Yaka Pengalasan, Partasuta, Hiratiatmaja, Sambhadratmaja, Wanudara and Wairabhata. He is the son of Arjuna, one of the five Pandava knights with Dui Subhadra, the daughter of Prabhu Basudeva, the king of Mandura and Dui Dawaki. He has thirteen other siblings, namely, Samitra, Bradalaras, Bombang Irawan, Kumaladewa, Kumalasakti, Wisangani, Wilanganga, Endong Prijiwa, Endong Prejawati, Prabhakusuma, Wijanarka, Anantadwadan Bombang Sambada. Abhimanyu is a divine being. Since in pregnancy he has received, Wahyu Hadayat, which is able to make him understand everything. As an adult he received, Wahyu Kakraningrat, a revelation that can bring down great kings. Abhimanyu had a subtle character and character, good behavior, clear speech, hard heart, big responsibility and courage. In the practice of soldiering, he received teachings from his father, Arjuna. While in spiritual practice he received teachings from his grandfather, Bhagawan Abhyasa. Abhimanyu lived in the Palankawati night, after defeating Prabhu Jayamursita. He has two wives, namely, Dui Siddhi Sundari, daughter of King Krishna, Raja Negara Dwarawati with Dui Pradiwi, 
Dui Yutari, daughter of Prabhu Matsyapati with Dui Niyutisnawati, from the country of Warada, and son of Parakazit. Abhimanyu died in the Bharatayuta war after previously all his brothers died, at that time the knights from the Pandavas who were in the lagoon field and mastered the war strategy only three people, namely Bhima, Arjuna and Abhimanyu. Ghatatbaka stepped aside because Karna stretched out Kunta Vijayadanu's weapon. Bhima and Arjuna were lured by the warriors from the Korawa side to get out of the battlefield, so Abhimanyu remained. When he found out that all of his brothers had fallen, Abhimanyu had forgotten to set up battle formation, he advanced himself to the middle of the Kaurava ranks and was trapped in the deadly formation prepared by the Kaurava army. Not wasting the opportunity to get ready, Kaurava rained weapons and Abhimanyu's body until Abhimanyu fell and fell from his horse, in the puppet depicted the wound charcoal cranjang equals many. Abhimanyu looks like a hedgehog because of the various weapons stuck in his body. It is said that the tragedy was a risk of taking an oath when applying for Dewey Utari, that he still does not have a wife and if he is married then he is ready to die by being stabbed with weapons during the Bharatayuda war. Abhimanyu lied because at that time Dewey City Sundari was already married. With weapons embedded all over her body so that she could not walk anymore, Abhimanyu could not give up. She even managed to kill the crown prince Hastinapura, Lasmana Mandrakumara, the son of Prabhu Duryudhana, by throwing Pulangani Karas after penetrating the bodies of four other soldiers. At that time the Koreans knew that in order to kill Abhimanyu, they had to cut off his chest, then Abhimanyu was killed by the club of Kyai Glingong or Gala Asemilik Jayadrata, a banakeling warrior.